Representative Pocan for bringing this to our attention, and um, Mr. Stork and is it, uh, Ms. Rickert for your sharing your stories with us. Um, I was interested, uh, Mr. Stork, and uh, I didn't, wasn't aware of the history, or maybe I misunderstood you, but you said that, that it was medical marijuana was legal and signed into law in 1982. Yeah, that's. A, and then what happened? And this has it been was a repeal. Oh uh, no, it's still on the books. It was the Therapeutic Cannabis Research Act, and uh, these these laws were passed in about 37 U.S. states. They were championed by Robert Randall, who was the first patient in the federal medical marijuana program, like myself, a glaucoma patient, who stumbled upon cannabis as a way to save his eyesight. And he was here on July 31st. 79 to testify for that. It does remain on the books, but it's symbolic because there's no means to supply the medicine. Because the federal government will not supply it. Well, I was under, I, I guess maybe I haven't done enough homework, but I thought that Obama had sort of lifted the ban federally, and, the, and that's why he's coming back to the states. Well, this law is structured so it, it, the, the marijuana was provided by the federal government the, uh, is it the FDA or NIDA? The same marijuana that's used for the now four surviving federal IND patients. So it comes from the farm in Mississippi. And because they have a monopoly on the federal supply, the only way of uh, supply the bill addressed was getting it from the federal government. And they refused to do it, so it became a moot point. What the Obama administration did recently was to basically say, don't go after and prosecute medical marijuana crimes. Uh, in, yeah, in states such as Thank you very much, Chairman Kennedy. And, um, I think most of us up here are compassionate individuals, and we're 